How we doing today, guys? It's been a while. Welcome back. I am super happy to be here. Um, <clears throat> this is Matt, and today I would really like to talk about Ori and the Blind Forest. So on Writers of the Dawn, we've been talking a lot about story crafting and what makes a good story, and I just thought it'd be really fun to do kind of a let's play, but to talk about story and gaming. So um, I really liked the opening cutscene to this, so I wanted to kind of go through it with you and just see what's going on and how this story is being set up. So if we start here at the prologue, um, it's going to set up some really cool stuff for us. So we see we're in this forest environment. First, thing, first things first, we're seeing our setting. And we have this voice talking to us. Oh, I remember when Ori was lost to the great storm. And then we see this beacon of light being torn away from the tree. So already what we're seeing is kind of the setup of the, the chosen one style protagonist. Um, you know, this, this beacon of light looks almost like a leaf. It's being torn away from the kind of sanctity of the home and it's being ripped into the unknown <clears throat> so we see this a lot in in high fantasy where we have kind of an orphan like a magical orphan being uh, whisked away into a world that they're not familiar with and now this is actually the first part of the game where you get to control the character this kind of big forest beast who doesn't really move very much and you're just gonna kinda make your way down towards where this beacon of light was when you get there you find well we'll see what we find because it's gonna show us here it is and we have this little cat cat demon and this is Ori so this is our first introduction And, you know, you've got the mother adopting the orphan. So the first thing that happens is you see this being ripped away from its natural home and dumped into a place that's unfamiliar, maybe even not even fully conscious, conscious yet of what has happened. Um, and this na this native taking taking it in as their own. So um, you have a lot of attachment to both of these characters right off of the bat. <clears throat> and so you see, you'll notice these X these X's on the trees in the background. That's really important later. And we jump up. We have some kind of half gameplay, half cinematic here, as you see there eating and now. Uh, the X goes on because they're running out of food. So the tension in the story is already heightened. Obviously, some time has passed, and now we're going to watch a little more passage of time. Because cooperation, building bridges... You know, all these, all these things where this is kind of rapid fire character development. Uh, we want to see that these two have a really strong relationship and that it's meaningful uh, because ultimately we, it, it needs to mean something when this relationship is taken away. Um, well, that might seem cynical, but in terms of st a story sense, what we're trying to do is create tension. And look, she's sitting here eating. It's clearly telling me that I need to go back. I also like how the tree doesn't speak English, but we do get the subtitles. It makes it feel more like a fantasy. Again, we, we go from abundance back to the trees with the X's. And there's the tree, blazing with light. 
And Ori's like, oh no, what's happening? Mama, take me away! So we don't really know what was happening there. But we see that... Okay, you see how the the fruit is no longer there? All the, all the plants have withered. Things aren't... Things aren't looking good for these two. And she gives the last fruit to Ori. So again, she's desperate. She's looking for something that's going to make them okay. And we see it up there at the top. Yeah, not going to work out for her. So let's see if Ari can make it better. We don't know. Again, we don't, you know, you don't see quite the hero's journey yet. It just, it's, it's very personal right now, uh, which is how this story is going to get you motivated and interested in, in this character. So we run back, we got all our fruit, and we see all these memories of the two of them together. Again, we have to ask ourselves, why why are we seeing these happy memories in you know, cast against this utter bleakness and darkness? Oh, I, I like that little little creature in the foreground. That's cool. And you see the the prime tree there in the background as Naru brought Ori inside and when Ori brings the fruit it's too late Yeah, this is really, this is this is a really good moment. I mean, the the sadness of the moment when you realize that the adopted mother is dead. It's man, it's that's brutal, and it's your, it's really the incident that incites Ori to go on this journey. Um, now, there's a lot of incidents that have led up to that. You know, being being brushed away from the tree, um, uh, awakening with her nearby, the the famine we could call it from all the fruit. These are all things that have pushed this character to this point, but not until she goes out can we even begin to see what this story is about um, just now the narrator said oh well she she's seeking my light but at this point because the character is basically without memory of this former life there's there's nothing that could possibly uh, make her think that that there is this divine being out there um, unless it were part of some kind of mythology. 
which at this point we haven't been introduced to. So we just have to assume that it's, you know, just in search of something, really in search of hope at this point, because things are so hopeless. And we're going to see that 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 hope is going to kind of come to an end here. Ah, so interesting. So basically, this collapse <clears throat> kind of recycles back into the environment. And in doing so, awakens this, this prime, prime creator of the forest. And so, in doing so, brings everything back full circle. So that's, I, I think that's a really cool way to, to set up a story. Um, I'm not very far into this game. I just thought the beginning was really cool and it had a really good inciting incident to help draw you into the story. So um, thanks guys for listening here. Um, it was really, really fun talking to you. I'm going to try and get back on this YouTube stuff. Um, I hope you guys... Have a great day and I will talk to you next time.